through forensic photo analysis. I found a massive historical cover-up. I started by looking at photos from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. This specific photo caught my eye. Something was off, and that's when I zoomed in on it. The tree line has clearly been altered. It's much darker behind the trees, where the editor got lazy and didn't wipe out the sky. And this was just the beginning of it. Because when I see one flaw, I know that it's time to investigate. A forensic photo analysis uses algorithms that we can determine if it's a real photo, computer generated, or if it was modified and edited. So I sent the photo into the forensic photo analysis and the results were shocking. We clearly have something in the sky that has been removed from this photo. Before I give my thoughts on what it is, I just want all of you to look at it for a second and let me know in the comments below what you think that is. I'll also show you a comparison to another photo that I had analyzed to show that having a figure in the sky is not random and not normal. There was something here in this photo and it's been edited out. It's undeniable. It's been removed to hide it from our timeline. In my opinion, this was an airship. We were never supposed to understand just how popular this free form of transportation really was. It was much more powerful than we could ever imagine. Welcome to episode 53 of my lunch break. I hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new, welcome. And I want to thank all of our sponsors over on Patreon. Thank you to flatearthdave.com. You can check out his app. I'll put the link in the description and you can use my referral code, MLB. The app is awesome. It shows a lot of videos that are really hard to find. They've got them all in great playlists. He also has my lunch break on the homeschool section of the app, which is really cool. Thank you for that. Thank you to Rebecca K, Don Gaston, Jason Brunson, Christopher Arietta, The Lady Lacey Show, Chuck Templeton, David and Sherry Ferguson, Edwin Johnson, Dale, DJ Click Track, Edward and Brianna, Edwin Rice, Joy Lee, Kyle Glasscock, Leslie Pipkins, PNR, Stephanie Nolan, The Burlesons, Two Spirit, Suez Casey, Dan Woodle, Regna Saturna, Mike L, Ivan Opakley, Jim Bro, Patriots Progeny, Attila Power, Buck Suey, Corey Franks, Dakota Dunn, D Rob 33, Jacob Law, Jim Ribley and Christine Duggan, Maddie B, Shiba Shaba in the Darkness, Spartan Oneg, Tim Rack, William Richard Jeffries V, and Zach Bronco. You guys are all awesome and helping this channel out a lot. Here we have a castle. Oh, did I say castle? I meant courthouse. We have the Royal Courts of Justice, located in London, England, where for some weird reason, they just couldn't decide on a design for this project. There were so many designs coming in, with master plans that they needed to hold a design competition, which was very common back in the 1800s because of course these 1800s people were just brilliant. It was very simple stuff back then. They just weren't distracted. They worked harder than us. And as long as they could draw it on a piece of paper with their feather, Donkeys Incorporated had the construction side of things down. Never an issue in the 1800s. So the competition began in 1866, 158 years ago, and ended in 1867. After 12 architects drew up their master plans, something that nobody will ever create again today, they supposedly had 12 guys in just London that could draw this type of thing up. In 2023, or 2024, we have a total of zero people that could draw this up and get it constructed in the entire world, let alone just London. 158 years ago, according to the mainstream narrative, this was, of course, no problem at all. Very simple stuff. So in 1868, they picked George Street. He was the champion of this contest. He went and got Messrs. Bull and his sons. Because in the 1800s, every single construction company in the whole world has to have sons at the end of it for some reason. Going back to the great Samuel Hannaford's and Sons, and there's many other examples throughout the episodes. In fact, throughout the first 52 episodes, I would love to know how many times we found a company with sons attached to the name. In my opinion, this is another clear pattern, proving that the AI is generating these names all over the world. 
Now, just to put this all into perspective, if we are trusting the mainstream story only 57 years prior to all of this happening, Abe Lincoln, a president of the United States, was being born in this masterpiece. The USA supposedly broke away from England and supposedly beat them in the war. If the USA was that smart and could beat England in a war, surely an architect or two would have followed along to America. I mean, London alone had 12. Surely the USA would have gotten one or two. So in 1809, we have shed masterpieces being put together with perfection. And all over London, we have the interior holding more than 1,000 rooms that include various meeting chambers, administrative offices, and at least, but could be more, than 78 courtrooms. Additionally, there are 3.5 miles of corridors and supposedly have all of this being constructed, even though we're told that the Masons led a serious strike in the beginning of the project. Bull crap and sons had to find more master builders, which of course was simple stuff in the 1800s. There was plenty to go around. So they were able to get some from Germany and they knocked this entire thing out with perfection and it will last forever. And even though there were some issues finding new people to construct this place, it wasn't a problem really. They got the whole thing done and settled in in just eight years. Are you on the fence? Should we go deeper? Not only was this done with perfection, the winner of the contest, George Street, as we have seen so many times before, dies before the project was completed. This is so repetitive, where the winner of a design competition doesn't live to see the end of the project and they're able to just bring anybody else in to finish it. Doesn't matter who. Everybody could do this back in the 1800s with ease. So then we have the Church of St. Mary, the Virgin Ivinghoe. And this will all tie together, but this was found around 800 years ago, in the year 1220, or 1222, which, I mean, come on. It was the booming 1200s. They worked by moonlight. Very busy people very dedicated. Lots of skilled hunters and gatherers. Without a power tool in sight, actually 673 years away from a power tool, supposedly. And of course the building will be there forever. They are addicted to lying because it is thought that an even older church may have originally stood here. I'm just surprised they didn't say that the first one burned down in a fire. The church was of course rebuilt for some reason in the year one, two, three, four, which was only 12 years after they say they found it. And they say that some of the original features survived. Survived? Wait, why are they rebuilding it? What happened? Did I miss some? Oh, you gotta be joking. Four years after they found it, it supposedly burned down in a fire. To believe these stories, it would take some effort at this point. And I'm just gonna be honest with you. In my opinion, that isn't even the craziest part of the story. Let's go even deeper. But before we do that, I just wanna show you all the reoccurring AI generated names really quick. We have Richard Blackhead and Richard Seward. So we have two Richards. And of course, Peter Desroches and Peter Chekapork. So we got two Peters and two Richards. We have more builders in London that like to build with their sons, John Warner and Sons, with of course another John down here at the bottom, John Downcomb where he has two wives, marries both of them, and one's named Mary. We have John Downcomb, and of course, we can't forget about the other Downcomb, Thomas, and the other one, William, and for the best part of this name generator, William married two people, Mary and Alice, spelled A-L-I-C-E. John Downcomb, guess who he marries? Do I even need to say it? I think we all know at this point what her name will be. Another Alice, spelled A-L-Y-C-E. If you're new to this and on the fence, if the AI is generating these names, this is not the first time that this has happened. You're gonna wanna check out episode 43 and all the reoccurring names in that one. Are we having fun? Are we ready for the best part? Remember, when we are told about the George Street guy, you know, the guy that died in the middle of the 1,000 room palace project that was done in eight years, 158 years ago? Guess who the AI just had to add in here to try to explain this one away as well? Mr. George Edmund Street. When in 1871 to 1872, he of course knocked out some Victorian Gothic revival style elements and built the North and South porches, as well as a medieval style baptistry. 
course he did. None of that was original. And this is totally believable. Oh, wait, it isn't? No, this was here long before anyone named George Street came around and he did not do any medieval style construction in a year, 153 years ago. This was constructed by the previous civilization that was much more advanced than we are today. And now that we know that George Street is a pawn in their generated system, it's time to investigate even further. I have located George Street in all of his supposed projects. And remember in the 1800s, he was doing projects that we cannot recreate today in just one year. George Street was supposedly born in 1824. How old do you think he was when he was completing his first building? 35 would be shocking. 30 is insane. We are told that George Street got to work and built the St. Mary's Church in 1848, making Street just 24 years old. And if you go onto this church's website, they say he was 22, where his sister, an embroiderer, heard of a Cornish clergyman and needed a new church built. Who better to ask than a 22 or 24 year old clerk? His sister, Mary, prevailed to give her inexperienced brother the commission for his brand new church. The rest, as they say, is his story. So obviously this is ridiculous and we need to keep digging because, wait, oh, are they really gonna keep doing this today? What was his sister's name again? And what is the church's name? Both named Mary? Okay, I think at this point we can be sure that they won't do it again, right? No, no way. George Street, his name is George. What is the guy's name that is building the building that hired George Street? They're not gonna tell us that this guy's name is also George. If they say that his name is George, then I don't know what I'm gonna do, but what is Reverend Prine's name? You know, the Cornish clergyman who intended to build the new Street Mary Church where George's sister Mary went and asked George Prine. I knew it was the AI before. I don't get shocked at things very often. This one is just so in your face. It's incredible. The good old Cornish clergyman giving away work in Cornwall. Amazing. I think we can do a few episodes on this first George, George Street, and probably a few episodes on the second George and all the Marys. Let me know if you want me to dig more into their narrative. So George Street, the first George, the 22 or 24 year old master builder, remember, he was constructing this 1,000 room courthouse in London for seven years because he was kicked out of the script a year before it got done in 1882. And remember from our last episode, episode 52, this is the exact same time period where you have all this chaos going on around the world. Nobody is focused on these narratives. You have all these millions of orphans all over the USA. You have the civil war going on, you have slavery, you have all these insane high intensity type events going on all over the place. People were not looking into George Street and the hundreds of buildings that they were pinning on this character. In fact, even if they wanted to, it wasn't written in a book yet and they didn't have the resources to prove anything. So they just had to simply believe it and everyone accepted it as the truth until now. 1873 to 1881, George Street is pinned as the man in charge of the Royal Courts of Justice for those eight years. I would love to know if he was fully focused on this project, one that we could never reproduce today in eight years. And we have shown the Kluczynski building in Chicago, where it is a basic box that took our civilization 14 years to build from 1960 to 1974. Or was George so good at his job that he could also get multiple other projects done at the exact same time. 1873 to 1881, George has been pinned and said to have had 42 other projects going on at the exact same time. Still believing the mainstream narrative? All right, now before we start the bonus, I wanna let you all know that we went to California this month and got some cool footage of some really cool buildings out there. So we will be talking about that and showing what we found in one of the upcoming episodes. We're just getting all the footage together and I'll keep you posted on that. And I wanna thank all of our badge members and Patreons and every single subscriber. You guys are all awesome and really helping grow this channel. All right, here we go. They tell us that the Linenwold Castle, located in Ambler, Pennsylvania, was designed by Milton Bean 
and built in 1890 without any details on its construction. It's just done in 1890. Where Madison lived in the castle with his second wife, Mary. Where after Madison died, the new people turned this palace into an orphanage called St. Mary's. Mary, Mary, Mary. So we have a massive castle, done in one year or less. And for decades, that's all we needed to hear for it to be true until now, where we understand that logically, that is impossible, especially 134 years ago. And especially when it's a castle straight out of the old world civilization's home improvement catalog. Here on HouseHisTree.com, in the middle of this story that has zero logistical details or anything relevant to actually building anything, and just has a bunch of nonsense, like naming sons royal, retired business partners, and telling us how many rooms are in this castle that they found. They do give us a tip, and the tip is the Windsor Castle. The sentence reads that Madison might have chose to model his castle after the Windsor Castle, which is the most popular answer. And it's the most popular answer among which group? Because that is definitely not the most popular answer to us, but they think it might be modeled after another castle nearby, and they all dispute it for years and years. And remember, it's all nonsense. We have no idea who this group is that they tell us that this is the most popular thought. What I see in all of this is one thing, the Windsor Castle. And I wanna see what year they say this Windsor Castle was built in, because I bet you it is connected to this castle. And this castle in Pennsylvania might have actually been built hundreds of years ago, if not thousands. And they will give it all away with this Windsor Castle connection. Located in Berkshire, Windsor, built in 1070, over 954 years ago as a fortress, and covers 484,000 square feet of living space, divided into about 1,000 rooms. So something is extremely clear here. We are 100% being lied to about our history. And we all know that, but I have to say it out loud because 1,000 years ago, they are building 1,000 room fortresses with ease. And it of course lasts forever, no questions asked. And today we have evolved so much that we can't build a sidewalk without stepping in it before it dries. Now, this is my opinion, but I can see them adding this Windsor Castle into the narrative for a specific reason. And I personally think it's to connect the dates, that these castles are from nearly 1,000 years ago when the previous civilization that had all the technology, had proper training, and had the logistics down. Instead of the opposite happening, where we are told that there were no classes in castle building at the local community college in the year 1070, where they would go home to their sheds and sleep with candlelight, freezing using barn hay as beds, and then waking up again traveling by horse and wagon to pull stone and granite miles on a trail and getting this 1,000 room fortress done no problem. The timeline is clearly all over the place at this point. They could have told us that it was built in the year 1045. It would have made no difference. And people would have just believed it until you start digging deeper, which we are doing here. Episode 41 is awesome at showing the proper logistics of a project, if you're interested in that after this. The castle has, of course, 300 fireplaces and 379 clocks. Do any of our towns have any upcoming plans to knock a 1,000 room, 300 fireplace fortress out in the next few years? What about half that? No? With our modern construction, 1,000 years after they did this, we should be able to do this with ease, since they did, without a power tool in sight. Supposedly, we have a better education system, so we are told. We have more knowledge than ever, supposedly. What is wrong with this picture? I would say a lot. Do you understand that something is wrong with the timeline? Something massive? Can we all see the lie very clearly now? We have been lied to about all of this, starting around the year 1800, and possibly right before that, where everything in our timeline began, and the old world buildings from the previous civilization are still here for us to see, in every city, with insane narratives to try to fit them into this lie, where we are told that people from 1,000 years ago were less than us, worse off, and we are told that we have all this brand new technology in the last 200 years. Everything is brand new. Every company was created recently all over the world. Is that not strange to you? And we're told this new technology has never been here before. Planes, trains, cars, phones, computers, internet, and the AI when it has. And in my opinion, 
It's been here many, many times before, and so have we.